Now, are you sitting comfortably? Good. Then we'll begin. I remember milling these boards what feels like decades ago. When I opened it up, I mean, it's like Christmas when you mill a board. There was lots of pinks, really fantastic colours. Proper, I probably had a one over these boards. Now they're dried though. They look a bit different. Nonetheless, crotch figure is crotch figure and it looks beautiful. So I'm going to try and um, make something nice out of it. Do bear in mind these boards haven't been milled flat nor square. I like that look. Um, I kind of like keep. Sometimes it's nice just to keep the board how it is, you know, how it came from and what movement it, it how it moved in the drying process. Um, sometimes it's nice to can leave it like that. Square kind of looks boring to me too, but anyway, it's easy to work from a board that's square though. That's really easy to work from one that's that doesn't have square edges. That's a different story. The one thing I didn't like about when I joined these two boards is there's a lot of sapwood and it kind of almost looks like a bow tie. But where that bow tie goes in at the middle where the knot would normally be if you're looking at a bow tie, it made the coffee table look too thin. So I'm trying to make two pieces together and use half of, or a third more of the other piece and join it together. but. Yeah, I was a little bit optimistic on that front. I don't know how I... I'll figure it out one day, but I don't know how you could make two pieces together like this. So, uh, yeah, I just f***ed off. Dominoes, yeah, I'm sorry, but they were kind of needed, really. I don't know if you've seen that video during the rounds. About gluing end grain together, that's actually stronger than you think it is. Well worth a watch. I'll see if I can find a link and put it down below. I wanted to show you this though. Um, sanding's one thing to get your wood nice and smooth, but there's also something else it does that I don't think people see. I'm obviously going way, way um, over the top to prove a point here. I mean, I would never really sand anything past 320, to be quite honest with you. Most finishes won't adhere to anything over 320 grit, as far as I know. And oils, yeah, you get away with it. But the slicker that wood is, the less the mechanical grip a finish has. Nonetheless, this does show you how much darker wood goes as you go through the grits. So if I was to hit that with finish, that's going to go really dark compared to if I um, put the finish over 320 sanded wood. And you can see those ray flex medullary rays have uh, got more of a creamy colour compared to like 320 grit, they look pretty much white. I hate seeing remote controls on top of a coffee table. I mean, I've got three of them, so uh, I needed to figure something else to add to this. Remembering there were four boards in the beginning that were all from the same ball. A little confession here, I did mill up some stock to uh, make up the legs while you weren't looking. So uh, this is what this bit's about. I thought I'd share this with you. That spout you can see sticking out, it's a quick pump for these glue jugs. 
that's made by trend that spout and it's shit don't waste your money there's gonna be a good 10 15 20 mil of glue in that cup by the time that's finished dribbling out the actual um, cap for the nozzle just keeps falling out all the time it's fucking useless <laughs> Oh, the like you fucking Russian. Zero clearance inserts. What a fucking waste of time they are. But they do look nice. I'll give you that. That's why I keep it. Just use a piece of MDF, lay it down, and make your cut. As soon as you do a mitre cut, that the fucked. It's easier to just to make your cut and then plane to thickness and plane out the tear out. Something to think about too, if you're laminating boards together to get a thickness for your legs like this, you really need to try and make sure it all still looks square at the end of it when you've thicknessed them and as even as possible. I'm just using ordinary household candles there to wax the bed like you would your hand planes. Things that make you go, what? This is kind of how I'd normally do it, but with just one board. And I'm thinking to myself here, I'd probably give myself a better chance here if I could cut both these boards at the same time. Fortunately though, I needed to glue all those bits of ply together to make two long boards. So by the time I'd done that, that was uh, the end of the day and I could go home and think about this. And not if I carried on, I would have screwed up badly here. Anyway, we'll get back to that in a bit. Wedges are well handy to have in the workshop when you're in a pinch and you need to get things level. Anyway, while they're gluing up, I can't really do anything much more of attaching the legs, so let's get on with this. This is uh, um, probably going to make a few people go, hmm, uh, not sure about this idea. Now, I'm doing it because if I do decide to put this piece of furniture up for sale, uh, people aren't going to be happy seeing bug holes. In, in the wood, in, in the sapwood. So in short, I want to shut all operations down on all those little glory holes in the uh, sapwood from the bugs. But, well, they're dead now. It's kiln dried, but they don't look good, do they? So they've got to go. You must remember here that, as what I said before, it's uh, much easier to make your joinery work if you can work from something that's square in the first place and flat. I really thought I had this uh, piece of wood locked down. Thank God I only found out that I didn't just then. That's still in the waste area of what I needed this piece of wood for. Having locked that down properly this time, I'm going to make that cut on that awkward piece of wood. If you're going to do something like this, please do not saw all the way through your piece of wood. Leave those two pieces of wood connected together. And it's not going to lift, and it's not going to twist into the blade and give you a kickback and ruin your workpiece or, you know, take your fingers off. You can easily hand saw the rest of that cut and finish it off. And therefore, that's, you know, it's just being safer. I might actually leave that wedge sticking out like that. I kind of like it. I kind of like it. it screws up the lines a little bit, you know? The masking tape isn't just there to hold a wedge in there. It's also to protect the sides from glue, so it's, I don't have to clean it up. That's one end taken care of. So just to reiterate, basically, when it comes to woodworking, you need to work from square somehow to get your joinery perfect. And this is basically what I'm doing. I'm creating like a fake square edge to work from by making that case as it were and then use the router to cut my joinery square well that's the theory anyway if you're not familiar with um sam maloof he made some very interesting hand with sculpted chairs Oh, I think the 60s now. Um, but I basically call this the Sam Aloof joint because this is what he used in most of his chairs and rocking chairs. It's worth having a look up and um, learning this joint because it's, it's pretty handy and you, Check square. you can do, do a lot from it. I actually drew all of those out square, so I don't know how it went wrong, but I had to recut all those four corners so they're square. So that's going to be my referencing for the joinery. 
I must stress here though, using a knife instead of a pencil for joinery. Very important. Like doing dovetails and it's been nice and tight. Tight as a duck's arse. Proper tight. This was absolutely doing my nutting. I kept finding these little dents in 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 the legs, like this, and I couldn't work out where the bloody well coming from. Anyway, this works pretty well to get rid of most dents, except just remember that it's covering away that steam. I can see that's done a pretty good job to get rid of them. The really nice thing about this joint is you can put it all together and go ahead and sculpt the thing. I'm um, just like it would be like if it, you know if you glued it up and also take it apart and then glue it up and you finish sculpting it but you need some pretty long drill bits to get through that oak but, um, so you can get the screws in that's kind of what I was hoping for with these shitty Amazon bits they weren't too bad once they're in the wood but boy did they, <laughs> they uh, wave about a bit And there's the nightmare that's been putting little dents in my wood, in my legs. Another great example here of why those screw that joint together like that is handy. If you'd glued those legs on, you'd have to shorten those legs on the piece. I can just take these off and head over to the mic saw and cut them to length. And here we go again. It was only at this point I actually found that bloody Brad now. How it got there and why it's there, I have no idea. Now I'm having a look at this thinking okay I want a shelf and I'm also thinking hmm this might not work I went through the whole process again for the shelf and um, stuffed it in there but this time I had the foresight to uh, use the jigsaw to hog out a lot of that waste it's not noticeable there but that second shelf is a push fit and a fucking tight one at that and it's, it is pushing the legs out a little bit even though I've used the template from before I looked at it and I thought to myself, you know, this just looks like a cheap IKEA TV stand I sometimes do to age oak the ammonia reacts with the tannins in the wood and basically it sends it to a sort of chocolate colour it depends how long you leave it in the tent for I left these legs in there for over a week after a week funny enough they actually look more olive green than they did brown but once any finish or hits that it goes really dark brown I mean you just spray water on it to know if you've got the right colour or not but it really penetrates a lot deeper than stain or dye um, so my, my thinking here is basically you've got a piece of furniture it's going to get dinged somehow probably possibly with a vacuum cleaner if you've Stain the piece legs with say Indian ink is only penetrated like a millimeter deep, and uh, you're going to start to see the color of the wood showing through and it'll be grinning at you like a Chinese cat. With this, it won't. I mean, you can see the bottom of the legs, which are actually what they were standing up on, that's penetrated that deep. Um, I'd say it penetrates about six mil deep. I'm just using my good old favourite finish. It's a hard wax oil, Osmo Poly X Satin. I don't particularly like shiny wood. I think it looks fake and plastic. 
So I usually go with this finish, unless asked. Otherwise, I'm pretty much, I put it on as thinly as possible, let that sort of soak in, and then I wipe off the excess, and I repeat that twice, which gives me a finish that looks like there isn't any finish there, as it were. You'll see what I mean here. I mean, it's a slight olive, olive greenness to this, but as soon as finish hits it, it's almost like walnut, like chocolate. Make no mistake about it, this is not a chemical you want to around with it is harsh it is hectic and it is not bleach you get off supermarket shelves either i made the mistake of uh, shaking the bottle with the lid off and spilled it all down the front of me i'm pre-finishing this coffee table for the main reason because of the legs are colored if i get glue on that i don't really have the you know i can't sand it back i will i will also mask it off as well it's just a, a double precaution to give me a fighting chance and not have any glue marks even when the glue's gone off even if it's colorless you're still going to see that in the finish so where those screws went into the legs those th those holes need plugging the dowels or if i'm going to use the screws and then cover them with dowels or plugs whatever i had the idea of trying to match you know those sort of v-shaped inlays i put in to the top of the table using the same wood i thought yeah, that would look pretty cool but then it'll match that's not kind of how it worked out but it's basically end grain so once finish hits it it's going to go really dark like that i let the glue cure lick my wounds sent the drill back in again and uh, did what i should have done in the first place and used oak dowels uh sorry uh, oak plugs to, to uh, match the top 